Nazmul, can you help send this uh, link to Shashwat, this M Microsoft Team link? Yes. Yes. Yeah? yes. Yes. Send. Yes. Yes. Sending it right away. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Sending it. Hi, this is Abhijit Ada. Hi, Abhijit. Welcome. Hi. We'll Hi, start Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, everybody. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar conducted by Progressive as well as Barracuda. Uh, in the next uh, one hour or so, we are going to cover very interesting insights based on the experience and learnings we have had with many companies. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to check my I'm, I'm audible, uh, Najmul. Yes, uh, you're perfectly right. audible. Uh, okay, because is also we can present. Start, right? We can start, right? Okay. 
so i even request just let's give a uh, two minutes uh, i see a lot of people joining in just let's sure, give sure. two minutes and we can absolutely fine all Perfect. right thank you so much I think we can start now and as and when people join they can I can enter them through the lobby. Sure, that's fine uh, Najmul, brilliant. So a warm welcome to all the participants in today's webinar and uh, my name is Ajit Nair. I'm the EVP for the company and uh, with me I have our uh, strategic business partner Mr. Vikas Pandey who is the regional sales manager and also we have our marketing head Mr. Najmul who is the convener of this session. So I think uh, today we are going to discuss uh, specifically about uh, how to keep our uh, IT ecosystem secure. There are new realities in the marketplace. The challenge for most of the CIOs in today's environment is how to defend the moving target. Moving target defense like in the military terms. In the current operating environment, IT systems are actually built to operate in a relatively stable configuration or a static configuration. For example, addresses, names, software stacks, networks and various configuration regarding parameters, etc. What do we do? What are the challenges which is faced by most of the CIOs today? How do they meet the reality? Perimeter people is the new parameter today. And uh, the operating environment is absolutely different. There are challenges of pandemic. 
there are challenges of cyber hacks there are challenges of addressing phishing attacks including the senior leadership team members who are not very it literate there are people who are operating including the risk mitigation team and risk team are operating from home actually that gives excellent opportunity to cyber hackers and attackers to sneak into your system and steal valuable data as they say data is the new oil data is the strategic asset for the company besides that there are, there are privacy challenges important information needs to be protected the center of gravity has shift, shifted today in the hands of the cxos today the it cios the ccos of the company have to really work hard in tough times these are indeed unprecedented times and therefore this requires new uh, you know new new address addressing of the new opportunities the is the name of the game no unknown uh, invisible there is an invisible enemy all over from all over the geography this is not only the borders of india but it is borderless in such situation we have to have new strategy in the new operating environment so what i am going to do is that briefly share with you a little bit about progressive as a company because i am sure that some of you may be curious to know what we as a company do after that we will straight away get into in the discussion as per our agenda today as a company i mean uh, we are uh, pure play managed services enterprise we have a vision called mars or a company which manages automates and renovates and secures your company we are a company our brand promise is that we make digital work 7 by 24 just to give a little uh, couple of slides so that we are all on the same page the company started about 22 years ago a crit Uh, absolutely stable enterprise zero debt enterprise we have 70 plus percent customers who are with us for over 5 years 1200 strong force all across the country a company which has recently gained a very good accolade the only company in india to kind get into gartner's magic quadrant so we are a company which got recognized as of a couple of days ago we we now are featuring in gartner's magic quadrant for public cloud um, infrastructure as well as professional and managed services worldwide i mean in our quadrant you have companies like actos and companies like fujitsu as company like infosys etc we are really proud about it and this credit goes to our entire team and a strong force of 1200 people we have 150 customers across the country across sectors right our domain competencies are in infrastructure management services we are absolutely in in networking support we are into cloud related uh, services and obviously digital workplace collaboration the need of the hour as we are seeing you would have read the report from companies like microsoft that what they have done in two years they have done in two year two months of digital transformation i mean definitely the world is changing and therefore the cios and the it leaders of the company need to take note what are the new vulnerabilities we are living in a vulnerable complex uncertain world and therefore this needs new strategy the operating model has changed the realities have changed and therefore that need new strategy from the cyber security data security and email security point of view we will definitely talk about it in a, in a, in a bit from the company perspective progressive certainly covers the entire spectrum of ims services uh, cloud related uh, support services including disaster recovery as a services these are all our scope of work centralytics is a very interesting product which helps companies to intelligently intelligently manage the cloud assets it gives compliance reports uh, it, it gives optimization the entire governance and control in the hands of the cxo we also help companies you know migrate from on premise to cloud etc as of today we are managing about 150 million dollars in cloud consumption worldwide and growing and uh, certainly that differentiates us because we are really adding solid solid value in terms of tco and benefits to all our customers we believe that the era has started for ims led uh, automation led ims or i should say ai ml based infrastructure management services what it means is that the the like in software development or devops shift left approach is also you know uh, happening in the ims world or the it infra world where customers and cxos are wanting lesser and lesser tickets more and more self service self healing tool self healing or self service products as a company we have invested in our ip we call it as automate next some of the customer who are new clients are getting the benefit of automate next which will help in self service thereby reducing the tickets increasing the asset productivity uptime reducing downtime and increasing end user experience 
So we will definitely add a lot of value to all our customers in the future. As a company, we have a framework called PACE that is Progressive Accelerated Cloud Migration Experience, taking companies, traditional companies who are a brick and mortar company to you know, cloud related uh, businesses because cloud first is the new strategy for more company and therefore the center of gravity shifts towards security, securing the perimeter, which is the people, securing the cloud ecosystem so that you also have a seamless experience and a robust support, uh, robot, robust application access to all your customer, whether it is B2B or B2C. We also have invested in, uh, in a very interesting platform called Titan. Titan is uh, nothing but simplifying Microsoft 365. Workplace collaboration is really zooming up because human is a social animal, right? They want to interact, they want to collaborate, they want to ideate, and therefore, a lot and a lot of uh, digital workplace collaborations are happening, particularly in these tough times, COVID times. We help company excel in digital workplace collaboration. We simplify workplace collaboration. In terms of security services, these are our portfolio and uh, I should say the uh, you know the band of uh, strategic partners who help create value, to help solve problems for our customers on 7 by 24 basis. So I think this is a nutshell as far as our companies are coming uh, are concerned. Coming to the today's uh, agenda, as we are discussed, we have to discuss about new insights. We have to discuss about how we as a company are going to add value to your ecosystem, some strategic perspective, how to build a resiliency in the IT ecosystem and how to secure our organization from attackers. How Because today the you know cyber attackers are actually exploiting the human nature. We are all working in a non-standard operating models, right? Work from home, they are all accessing low cost broadband, you know, from a cyber cafe or from wherever that, that multiplies the vulnerability. And today that's what Vikas is going to talk about that in this sea of overwhelming priorities, how do we securely access application? How does I organization respond to any incidences? What kind of remote access capabilities are required? Do, does it need to be tested? How do you ensure endpoints by the workers are patched? How do you ensure that corporate laptops are absolutely protected with minimum viable endpoint protection or configurations? How do we teach or train your senior leadership team members? And security teams actually should be very cautious with access to corporate application that actually stores very mission critical or personal information from personally owned devices, etc. So these are some of the challenges what comes to mind in most CXOs ask, asking, we are concerned about security, we are concerned about data leakages. And actually, I must tell you, over the last 60 days, I must have had at least uh, 100 odd uh, meetings with CXOs of top companies in India. Same concerns, similar concerns, that how do I protect our valuable data? How do, you, how do I know whether data is getting siphoned off to competitors? How do I ensure that access is restricted? Only need to know people should know their data, nobody else. And most importantly, you know, Trojans inject injecting of the malware. Seventy percent of the traffic on the internet today is bots, good bots and bad bots. How do we protect them? Can humans really interject, protect with uh, nice cyber architecture or strategies? And that's what we will discuss today. So I would, uh, without taking more time, I would uh, request my colleague uh, Vikas to make his presentation. So over to you, Vikas, for your excellent insights and learnings as well. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajit. Just give me a minute. Let me share my screen. Uh, I hope the screen is visible and it's full screen. Yes. Asmulkan. OK, yes. thank you very much. Yes. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Vikas. I'm from Barracuda Networks. Uh, today I'm here with my colleague Shashwat, sales engineer, Barracuda Networks, and uh, Nazmul from Progressive Marketing Team, Ajit, and also Mr. Uh, Ravi Malhotra, Practice at Security Progressive. And you know, uh, many of us have been asked staying home. So I am also following uh, social distancing. And trust me, uh, I have never witnessed such a confused state in my life. You know, uh, Delhi air is so pure, but I cannot go out. I have to wear mask. You know, look at the weather; it's amazing. Roads are empty, but I have to stay home. You know, myself and my wife, we have become professional chefs or probably you know much better cook thanks to youtube but still i cannot call my family or my friends for dinner so this redefines how we live our lives and at the end it is for our own benefit 
uh, sooner we get used to it, faster we'll come out of this mess. And not only us, you know, government is also following the new normal. You know, they are also going into WebEx. Uh, schools have started, you know, remote classes. And same is applicable to us as well as to our customer. We are also supporting our customer globally over remote, over WebEx. And on a lighter note, you know, I always believed my eyes that, you know, parliament sessions are very noisy. You know, but if you enter one of your kids uh, remote class, you will feel the real turbulence because they are absolutely new to this kind of environment. You know, mutes are not, uh, you know, they are not on mute. Cameras are on and uh, not everybody have a dedicated in Internet connection at home. And to top it up, you know, sometimes the parents are actually coming into remote classes and complaining about their kids that, you know, he's on TV entire day. But what a poor kid can do, he cannot go outside. So. Teachers are also very calmly uh, pushing the parents to stay out of the session and mentioning that this is not a parent teacher meeting. We'll definitely have a separate session to discuss these kind of agenda. So this is a new normal that everyone is going through. And when I also ask some of my customers that, uh, sir, have you ever thought about a uh, remote working scenario? Probably a hundred percent remote working scenario, uh, maybe three months back. The answer was no. But now when we are asking that, will you consider 100% remote working scenario down the line? Definitely the answer is yes. And a lot of us are thinking about a alternative strategy to continue business as usual for certain situation. And that is where the public cloud play a very, very important role. You know, cloud is agile. It is distributed because of its elasticity. You can grow and shrink based on your needs. You know, if you are an online merchant like a Flipkart and you have rolled out a high discounted sales scheme during Diwali, you're expecting high traffic. So what you need is more compute and more resources. However, post the sales season, you want to come back to limited compute and resources and pay accordingly. So that's typically possible when you are in public cloud. So if I ask you with all of these things going around, you know, keeping all these changes in mind, where will your application will be in next two years? You are likely to fall in one of the following category. You know, you may be on premise with some SaaS based application like Office 365, or it could be a hybrid environment, or it could be all in cloud. And as the application and data are on move, these are the three stages of migration that typically any customer will go through while they gradually migrate on cloud. But most of the organization are actually on the left hand side of this chart where they have, you know, on premise data center and some SaaS based application. And when organization gradually migrate to right hand side, you will see the parameter security or the parameter will become less and less well defined until it completely disappear. And when this will happen, the role of your firewall will dramatically changes, as does your network architecture, as well as the placement of certain security tools. So the purpose of this conversation is to discuss how these changes will affect your organization going forward and what are the security measures you need to consider and what are the security measures that some of our customers are actually considering. And definitely, you know, this is very, very evident that network parameter is collapsing. You know, it is a time that we should think about security beyond the parameter because our assets are not confined without a network. They are definitely, you know, uh, placed outside the network. People are working from home. We are placing certain application. We're looking for a quick scaling and adopting public cloud so that we can have a better visibility. So we also need to keep in mind that when we are actually going on a public cloud, there's always a shared security model. I definitely want to highlight this particular slide because when you go on public cloud, there's a shared security model where the cloud provider takes care of security of the cloud. So they will take care of security of the physical infrastructure, network infrastructure, the virtualization layer. But as a customer, you define the controls and security in the crowd. So you ensure that you have those IPS IDS functionality enabled on the assets you have on the cloud. You define that you wanna have the same kind of a sense and control on your asset when the asset was on-premise and now when the asset is on public cloud.
you also want to ensure that if you are you know building or developing any application in the cloud or you are you know publishing any public facing application in the cloud you take care security of that public public facing application in the cloud and that's where the layer 7 security comes in picture so definitely there are a lot of new concern that our customer have you know in their mind when they are thinking about a business continuity in these current scenarios so obviously you know they are going through the lot of changes is where they have to enable the remote and it is a remote working for a lot of employees for the first time a lot of customers are actually quickly adopting public cloud it could be a first time for them people who are already on public cloud they have moved a lot of you know new in front the cloud so they are thinking about how do they manage the hybrid network and most importantly it was always there and it is more evident now because it's not a happy hour for us it's a happy hour for hacker we have to ensure that we are protected from the advanced threat so these are the new security concern that you know our customer have in mind when they are thinking about you know business continuity and if i be very very specific that what are the you know top vectors that they are planning to control couple of things that comes in our mind you know uh, definitely a remote access because users are working from home so they are for malicious content that can get downloaded from the non productive website because in office environment there are a lot of restrictions but when they are working from home they can actually go to non productive website intentionally non intentionally and can end up downloading a malicious content and when they eventually log into corporate network there is always a risk you know uh, email email is always remain uh, the weakest point but nowadays many employees who are working from home for the first time they are facing a lot of distraction you know everybody go through a lot of distraction but people who are actually working from home for the first time they going through a lot of distraction and this time of distraction this creates a perfect opportunity for any email scammer to attack a employee a purchase guy you know a c level guy who need to make a decision so that is the other concern people have data you know a data you know moving your workforce out of your corporate office can bring big changes and potential risk in how they save their data you know earlier when they were in office they were saving their data on a network drive or a file server but while they are working from home either they will connect it to the corporate network via vpn or they will be using something like you know microsoft onedrive for business so you have to think about a strategy that if somebody delete the data from microsoft onedrive how do i keep a backup of that data and most importantly which i see that going to be the first thing that a lot of customer will be asking is security on the web application because website will become a face of any organization you know consumer buying has quickly shifted from physical to online you know everything is locked down so all these merchant like big basket grofer their sale will definitely will go high because a lot of people are actually going online to procure things so website will eventually uh, become a face for all the organization i was in a conversation with one of the merchant 2 uh, 3 days back and they are actually uh, into you know online shopping and they deliver dairy products like you know cow milk uh, uh, cheese uh, those kind of first stuff and they were also uh, you know uh, i would not say competition to the regular you know big players like mother dairy and all but nowadays when they are thinking that you know people are going to buy a lot of stuff online they are expecting a heavy purchase orders on their website and that's where they are also thinking about securing their website you know probably uh, loading that website on multiple servers so that they don't face latency kind of first to issue so these are the things that you know a lot of our customer are going through and they're thinking about concerning these you know uh, issues so on that note i like you to welcome to the brave new world you know and we will discuss you know how do we address the challenges of quickly going online and you know the remote workers so i would like to probably you know uh, think about you know two scenarios right now you know when we talk about you know going online quickly the number one option we have in the current scenario is adopt public cloud you know go to azure or go to aws adopt the cloud very quickly to scale now when you adopt cloud and you're hosting your website on the cloud you have to ensure that you are enabling a protection for your website you have to ensure that you're enabling that the website is not being attacked by ddosing the sql attack the advanced bots and you also ensure from a os top 10 attack 
and always whenever the discussion of application security comes in picture i have encountered a lot of my customer you know coming up with a i would say a rebuttal that i already have a utm in place or i already have a firewall in place why would i require a web application firewall well the problem is the application aware firewall do not secure a web application you know any network firewall or a layer 4 firewall don't protect web application because by definition incoming traffic on port 80 and port 443 passes straight to the web server and if they don't do it none of your web server is accessed from the outside world it's not reachable if it's behind a firewall so an ng firewall or network firewall job is to let know good traffic through your network and keep the bad traffic out the problem is historically the http and https protocol are known as good traffic and hackers actually piggyback their bad stuff on or on top of http so eventually the ng firewall will send that bad request along with the good request to your web server and that's where a web application firewall comes in picture a web application firewall typically get you know deployed in front of your web server so your web servers are actually not exposed to internet a web application firewall intercept all traffic including https traffic and in this example you can see waf detected a cross site scripting attack which was hidden inside a http request and it blocked that particular attack going to your web server the waf will not only stop here you know when by default servers send a lot of information to the outside world so when there's a sensitive information going out of your server, things like uh, credit card information, social security info, you know, number, the web application firewall will block that kind of a traffic also. So why do you need a web application firewall? It's a security device for a website to protect your web application. Most of the website you know are online you know there are more feature to place an order to use credit card to integrate with paytm or any kind of application so there are a lot of more you know vulnerabilities they have and if you allow customer to log in you are allowing your customer to swipe the credit card taking financial information you definitely attract the you know compliance like you know payment card industry pci compliance and all so you definitely need a web application firewall and i can you know tell you that everyone is a target you know uh, the reason i highlighted this particular organization online which is a fragus you know they are into cyber crime you know you can actually buy a subscription from fragus and they will help you hack any website so you really don't need a rocket science to hack somebody it's a paid subscription you can buy and they are so well organized that if you're not able to hack somebody, you call their toll free number that, hey, I'm not able to hack abc.com. They will start with the apology statement that I'm sorry to hear that. Let me give you a technician who will help you hack that website. So everyone is a target. And when all of these things are going on right now, where you are setting up your infrastructure, you know, remotely in a hybrid fashion to ensure that, you know, business continue to you is there one thing you want to avoid is a hack on your organization you definitely don't want to be highlighted like cognizant or the other people who are actually getting attacked okay um, i mean i see a recently maze attack that has happened so what we are recommending our customer when all of these things are happening why don't they go ahead and do a health checkup of their website you know a lot of time the customer do buy the paid tools to do an assessment of their website we also have a tool where they can actually do a health checkup of their website which we call it as a barracuda vulnerability manager it's a free scan that scans your website and gives you a report in 24 hour and tells you that these are the loopholes you have in your website and this is how you can be hacked. And then eventually, if you want to go for a prevention, there are a lot of options that are available, but we are also recommending our customer that while they are setting up a lot of things, they should look out for an option. We do a health assessment of their website because when you create a website, you know, and if you do it on a quickly basis on an overnight basis there are chances that you know the website may have a lot of loopholes and if you are only keeping your website behind a firewall 
you know that you know the firewall don't secure the uh, web application firewall and eventually if you're hosting your website on public cloud you have to ensure that you do have that kind of a uh, application security for your website so there are different different ways that you can do a web application firewall deployment you can have hardware virtual you can always you know have it on public cloud and the most easy way that we see is a WAF as a service where you don't need to host any you know hardware you have one or two application you're looking for a security you can definitely get in touch with progressive team they have their own SOC and they can help you with the WAF as a service that that's the option you know we have available so in this you know application driven world where we are hosting things on public cloud we are letting a lot of customer come on our website make transaction both firewall and web application firewall are very very necessary that is what we are recommending our customer and we are also you know telling our customer that they go ahead and do these free scan which can actually you know let them know what kind of a vulnerabilities they have in their website and then eventually we can always you know help them how they can patch those kind of uh, you know problems they have on the website so that is one top threat vector that we see uh, from our customers concern that is one top threat vector we see that a lot of our customers are looking to secure the other thing that we see which is always you know the weakest point which is the email i mean from the inception the email is always the weakest link and we are now seeing when a lot of employees are working from home they are distracted they are a lot of easy way the hacker can actually you know do a scam so if you traditionally see uh, you know all these kind of uh, risk which has happened over the last decade there are a lot of you know ways the hackers are actually entering a network maybe a spam and a malware uh, we have also heard about a zero day attack then phishing the lot of hackers who do the brand impersonation kind of a thing then over the last decade we have seen ransomware coming in we have seen you know spare phishing social engineering we also seen business email compromise and the latest trend that we are seeing is the account takeover so that's the latest thing that we are seeing, which is you know gaining a uh, percentage on a daily basis. So if you see uh, in early days, it was very very simple. You know, you you have the internet, you have your mail server, corporate inbox, you have the good mails coming in. When in early days we had you know spam and malware coming in, we have placed a anti-spam firewall in picture that was keeping the bad mail out of the network so that was the job of the spam firewall and over the year we have attracted a lot of features like dlp backup and archiving part of the overall email security requirement that we had when the zero day things were coming the zero day threat started coming technologies had developed and we have enabled a technology called sandboxing or other term we can call it as a atp so typically a firewall or spam firewall works on signature it will look out for a bad attachment or a malicious link and if they have that signature they will block that email but if it's a zero day attack what they will do they will not deliver that mail they will explode in the sandboxing environment and once it's verified then it's get delivered otherwise the signature get created which is you know passed to the a spam firewall box but the problem that we are seeing in the recent days you know in the last you know couple of years is social engineering social engineering email actually bypass your traditional mail gateway platform and there, there's a valid reason behind it because a spam firewall gateway works on signature its job is to look out for a bad attachment or a malicious link and if a spam firewall does not find a bad attachment or a malicious link you know it bypass that you know mail so social engineering attack does not contain any link or any attachment they try to trick a user by doing something you know to gateway social engineering email or a business email compromise the co fraud looks like a normal email um, or a normal you know clean email so that is the biggest problem and top it up you know we are actually having a you know unified mailboxes in our machine you know keep our exchange password and gmail password as same if someone is able to gain access to our gmail password and if it's same as your exchange password there's a high possibility that you will end up having an account takeover and account takeover request is actually coming from a user which is claiming that i am mr x but actually it's mr x because they already have the id and password and those mail actually don't go to the gateway it's an internal communication 
and that's that's very very dangerous because you can't identify if it's a right mail or a wrong mail so those mail doesn't go to the spam gateway so what we are you know recommending our customer that securing gateway is always necessary you cannot avoid the gateway platform but that is not you know sufficient you need to think about a multi layer email security approach to handle today's sophisticated you know attacks so what are the thing that we are recommending our customer you know obviously uh, they will start from you know exchange or G Suite or Office 365. We will see a lot of customer on Office 365 because Office 365 is one of the best mailing platform we have in today's world. No one is actually close to that and the growth rate is also very high. They're growing like 60% year on year basis. And now that when everything is on cloud and we're talking about you know people working from home, Office 365 is actually designed uh, for the remote employee. So there is a lot of, you know, uh, uh, adoption of office 365 we will see uh, which is already happening so your mailing platform starts from the office 365 the first layer of defense you would require is a gateway level defense where you would apply a security that takes care of the inbound and outbound uh, spam you know you would also like to enable it with the encryption and dlp for secure messaging if you follow any compliance, you have to keep a copy of any incoming and outgoing email for three year or five year as per your organization compliance. You also will go for an archiving solution. And for the zero day attack, you also would like to have a ATP functionality built in so that you know you have that sandboxing in place. On top of it, what we are rec recommending our customers to think about resiliency, you know, uh, think about mail continuity. It's not very, very normal or usual that Microsoft data centers will go down. But in a scenario, if a Microsoft data center goes down, we need to ask question to ourselves that can we be without email for 10 minutes or 15 minutes? You know, most of the time the answer is no. So we need to think about an alternative strategy that if Microsoft data center goes down, what is the other? way I have that I can have the mail continuity. Now cloud to cloud backup is the another use case that a lot of customers are uh, you know experiencing these days. As I mentioned in my earlier slide that you have uh, not you specifically the circumstances have allowed users to work from home. And when they are working from home, they are not using the regular shared drives to keep the backup. They are probably inclined to use Microsoft OneDrive to store their data. So what is the you know, plan we have to do a backup of Office 365? Because even in the Microsoft SLA, if you delete a file from OneDrive, after 30 days, it gets permanently deleted. So you need to think about a backup of your data, which is in the public cloud. Now, once you have applied the gateway level security for inbound and outbound spam and DLP encryption, which is working on signature, we recommend our customer to look about the inbox defense you know think about something an artificial intelligence technology that takes care of the social engineering email a technology which understands somebody's behavior that is my behavior to write a mail and ask for sensitive information do i do it or am i asking for someone else appraisal those kind of first stuff so social engineering you know, a mail is actually a mail which try to trick a user and ask for some sensitive information. So we need to have an artificial intelligence in place that understand organization pattern, understand organization domains they communicate with. And if they see any unusual activity, they block those mail on a real time basis. Then we need to think about how do we implement account defense, account takeover defense. You know, if somebody is, is logging from a different geolocation, which they normally don't, there has to be a way where we flag a user that you typically log in from Delhi. Suddenly I see a request coming from Mumbai or from some other geolocation, or you usually use your, you know, Apple laptop. I see an iPad trying to log in with your credentials. So those kind of a mechanism should be in place. And definitely you know implement dmark you know uh, no one should be using your brand name or a brand name which look like your brand name and fooling your client and your you know customer so we need to ensure that we implement dmark and finally we need to have a 
phishing simulation and a training for end user because they are the frontliner. They are the first point of contact when they see an email. So they should be trained regularly that they can identify that, hey, this is a bad email. My colleagues generally don't ask for this information. That looks very suspicious because this client of mine don't ask for payment in middle of the month. So those are the phishing and the simulation training we should have for our end user. So now that we are already on Office 365, how do we identify that? Are we facing these kind of a challenges or are we getting these kind of a email? Because until and unless your employee react on those email, nothing will happen. If someone has sent a mail to your employee and asked to transfer five lakh rupees and if if that employee didn't react on it, nothing will happen. It's like a slipper cell, but you, we cannot take that chance. If we are getting those kind of a spear phishing mail or social engineering mail, we need to have a mechanism in place to block it. So first we need to identify, am I getting those email? Is my Office 365 is not good enough to manage those social engineering email and spear phishing email? The best way is to do an assessment, do a health checkup of Office 365. So we do have a tool. And probably we are the only vendor who got a tool which is called Barracuda Email Threat Scanner. It scans your complete Office 365 environment based on the number of mailboxes you have, 1,000, 1,500. You get a report in 24 hours. And the report will look like this. The report will talk about how many fraudulent emails you have got, how many employees you have at risk, how many domain fraud that has happened. And that is when you can take a decision that the current exchange online protection or the ATP that I have with my uh, you know, basic or the advanced plan is not good enough to take care of the spear phishing and the social engineering attack. I need a third party security. I need to look out for an artificial intelligence or something where I don't get these kind of stuff. So we do recommend our customer to do these kind of a scan. And probably this is the best time because while you are setting up the entire you know, infrastructure for business continuity, you don't want to be in a situation where you have these kind of a scam or where your finance guy will end up transferring money to some other account. Because we have seen those kind of a email coming where hackers are actually using the context of COVID-19 to fool a user for some people it's a very sensitive you know uh, thing you know what the ha hacker are actually doing they're first doing a domain impersonation so they will create a domain which look like your client domain or probably a vendor domain where you do a usual transaction then they will try and reply on an existing conversation to the finance guy and eventually they will use the you will they will use the context of the covid-19 that maybe you know uh, due to covid-19 i'm not able to go to my regular bank the bank is shut so i request you to set up a new bank for me and here is my banking new banking information you know you and me are an it guy but with all due respect finance is not a that tech savvy guy that he can understand that it's a domain impersonation or even I don't go and double click on every email ID to see what is that domain. You know, sometimes there's a misspell in the domain and it looks like a regular domain. So there's a very high chance that the finance will fall for it and eventually transfer the money. And we have seen these kind of incident happening even COVID-19 and you know, prior to COVID-19 also we have seen where someone is actually trying to fool the finance guy and pull out the money. So this is the best time you can actually do a security assessment of your Office 365 and see what kind of a mails you are getting. And then you can take a call that should I actually go for a, a third party email security or not. So I, I, you know, I don't want to go much deeper in each of the aspect, but these are the two things that we're seeing a lot of interaction from a customer about web application security because website is a new face of any organization and securing their employees working from home who are getting distracted and they should not fall for any email kind of a scam. So moving forward, you know, uh, what Progressive and Barracuda can help you, you know, using these two tools, Barracuda email threat scanner or exchange threat scanner and Barracuda vulnerability manager, we can help you do the assessment on two vectors. Exchange threat scanner is for your Office 365 scan. So we can help you scan your Office 365 and then we can help you understand that these are the attacks that you're getting. And then definitely you can propose to your management that we probably have to look out for some security. 
second place where we can help you is to tighten the security on the website. We can help you do the health checkup of your website, see how vulnerable your website is. We can tell you these are the you know five ten ways the website can be hacked. The good part is that both of these scanners which we are talking are absolutely free of cost. That's secondary. They're absolutely no impact on the production. So if you are running the scan there, they get run in the back end. So there's no impact on the email performance. There's no there's no latency in the website. They absolutely run in the back end and in 24 hour you get that report which gives you a visibility on two vector. One is the email and second is the uh, website. And eventually, if you would like, you know, Barracuda do have, you know, technology that can help you. We have web application firewall and multiple deployment factors. We do have NG firewalls where if you are looking for remote access, we do have, you know, essentials for email security, which is a complete suit, uh, you know, email security package for Office 365. And there are multiple flavor in our Office 365 offering along with the gateway. We do have an artificial intelligence technology technology where we understand your organization pattern. We understand the mails uh, that you typically write. We integrate with Office 365 via API. And if you get those kind of a social engineering emails, spare phishing, business email compromise, account takeover, we flag and you know notify the user on a real time basis. So that's very unique offering Barracuda have on Office 365 and then along uh, with these AI part, we do have the uh, phishing and assimilation training for the end user. Then we also have, you know, web security uh, for end user working from home. So if you want to deploy those corporate policies on the laptops, uh, that can be done. And we can also help you do the backup of your Office 365 environment if that's a use case that you come across. And if you follow any compliance, we do have, you know, archival solutions. So that is where, you know, Progressive and Barracuda can help you in the current situation and going forward. My request would be you can, you know, definitely use the two tools which you see on the left hand side of the screen, you know, Exchange Threat Scanner or Email Threat Scanner to scan your Office 365, see what's the current status and also the Barracuda vulnerability, which gives you a visibility uh, of the loopholes you have on the website. So on that note, I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, your interest uh, on in this session. I want to open the floor uh, for any you know questions uh, that you have related to you know the things that we have discussed. I do have Shashwat and Progressive Team online uh, that can help you. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Well, thank you everybody. This is Ajit Nair again. Uh, any questions are welcome. Most happy to discuss any queries you may have, any problems at hand or any insight you wish to learn. This is a forum to learn, connect, understand and gain deeper insights on the cyber ecosystem. We are happy to solve your problems, discuss and share knowledge. And that's the purpose of today's webinar. So happy to listen to our uh, friends from our customer fraternity, potential partners, potential clients as well. Any questions which is of concern, any anything which you would like to ask, most welcome. So we will open the forum for any Q&A. Uh, meanwhile, Najma, you can uh, Comments on the chat. Anybody ask any question? Please yes, no. uh, Hi, Shivra. Uh, hello. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Shivraj. Yeah, so like uh, we are using G Suite for the email services. Will this firewall will be able to secure us in the Gmail platform? Like we don't have the Exchange server. So to secure your email uh, users, you have to deploy. Think of deploying a third-party email security, like Barracuda. Okay, so it, it won't help in the G Suite, right? Correct, because whenever I send an email to your email ID, it directly goes to Gmail, right? And your users are accessing their emails uh, from Gmail. If they are sitting in corporate office, uh, they are accessing their mails via corporate firewall. If they are sitting at home, they are directly they are they are directly accessing their emails via Gmail, right? 
so there is no role of corporate firewall protecting users if you are talking about email email okay threats coming okay. from email so in that case we need to think about like deploying third party email security like that right. so to deploy email security just to share with you to deploy email security it's very simple three or four steps uh, deployment so basically let's say you want to deploy it on gcu you have to change your mx record towards barracuda and barracuda after scanning all inbound emails will deliver it to gcu Okay. And same all is right. with the outbound. You have to create a outbound route in G Suite to route all the emails going out from your organization towards Barracuda. Once we okay. perform the scan, uh, we'll send that email to the recipient. And there we have a couple of policies like you can also uh, configure DLP, few all content right. filters <laughs> where you can configure few patterns to be checked going out from your organization if someone is sending. Sensitive information from the organizational email, so those policies are there. You can configure. Okay, so basically, email gateway we have to define on the G Suite that will route all the emails through the Barracuda server. Yes, okay. email okay. security plus ATP, both. Oh, all right. Okay. So like I am using Sophos firewall right now, and it's going to renewal in the next 30 days or 60 days. So I I want Ajit to share the all the this Baraguda firewall subscription details and all one year and sure. three year quotation. Sure, sir. Yes, sure, uh, Shivraj. Uh, we will do that. My colleague Ravi Malhotra, who is also present in this call, he will get in touch with you and uh, we will share the okay. techno commercial aspect and design aspects. Thanks. Thanks, Ajit. Oh. any more questions uh, we'll be happy to address any questions or any inputs or any query you may have happy to address that those yeah aditya can you speak a bit louder please yeah Yes, there is a problem with the internet at this moment, so I will try to move loud. Yeah, it's okay. We are able to hear you. Also. So, uh, like, uh, our... okay. So, uh, like, uh, uh, Mr. mentioning about PCI DSS thing, so being the natural loss of PCI DSS, some kind of organization. I just wanted to know, like, if there is any website or a web application which is exposed to outer world and where user, like, customers, have privileges to enter card details. So, uh, what Baraguta has to offer in that kind of scenario? Like, so to secure that uh, card details. And that is a web application, and that too is exposed on a public network. Then, how do we ensure measures to remain compliant as per PCI DSS conditions? So, sir, uh, your voice is cracking, but uh, I I think I understand your query. So, basically, if your application is into like uh, uh, PCI DSS, you are into payments. You are storing credit card, Aadhaar number, PAN card information in within the application. So, if you deploy Barracuda web application firewall, you can configure many policies. First of all, it will it is going to protect you against all OAP top 10 or layer seven attacks, any kind of layer seven attack. Okay. Plus, Barracuda web application firewall also inspects the response going back to the client, right? So, if as an attacker or as a client, I I can. I, I can get the credit card or debit card information within the response back to my client browser. So in that case, Barracuda Web Application Firewall is going to block all those all that information. So Barracuda Web Application Firewall will help you to achieve PCI DSS. Okay. I, I think that is host on Azure. That is on cloud. 
So basically, and we. we so, uh, so, uh, sir, uh, it's really hard to uh, hear you. So your voice is cracking, but I heard a few words like uh, your application is hosted in Azure. So our Barracuda web application firewall is available in different form factors. Our web application firewall is also available in all, all public cloud platform like Azure, AWS and Google Cloud. So if your applications are hosted in Azure, you can think of deploying Barracuda web application firewall in your Azure tenant. So whatever traffic, let's say I'm accessing your application, mm -hmm. that, that traffic will hit to the WAF first and after inspecting each and everything, WAF will send the traffic back to the application. And same is with the response. So application will never respond to the client directly. The application will respond okay. to the WAF and WAF will uh, send the response. After inspecting the response, WAF will send the response back to the client. So as being a reverse proxy solution, WAF will inspect whatever comes in and whatever goes out. So it will uh, inspect each and everything coming and going out from your organization. And sir, it's very simple to deploy Barracuda okay. web No, firewall. even in Azure itself. Sir, in Azure itself, there is a WAF. Okay, they, they have, they offer a native, native WAF. Sir, we are not able to hear you actually. I think uh, uh, there is a lot of network issues. Uh, if you don't mind, can you, uh, if you don't mind, can you just uh, uh, type in, in the chat section so that uh, uh, Barakuda team can also understand the question properly, if that's okay with you. Uh, sure. sure. Yeah, that will help, yes. In the meanwhile, if uh, any more questions are there, we can address that while Aditya types his question. So, sir, basically, okay, your question is my question. Okay, do I need Barracuda firewall on top when I can control both inbound and outbound traffic and services using Azure policies? So, basically, sir, in Azure, you configure security groups, right? Where you allow port 80443. So, Azure is doing nothing, uh, just forwarding those ports back to your application server. They are not ins inspecting anything. They are they they are not applying any IDS IPS kind of policies. They are not inspecting for a OAuth stopped in. So these things are missing. So security groups are nothing but these are, you can imagine like you can assume these are the kind of network perimeter firewall without any security features. Yeah, it's just a port forwarding happening there, Aditya. I mean, exactly. I'm, I mean, this firewall is just not sensible enough to look inside packets, you know, if these packets are carrying any kind of malicious stuff. Uh, so maybe I can explain more. So port 80 uh, just simply looks port 80 uh, for the Azure firewall. Uh, but if the same traffic is going through the Barracuda firewall or, of, or if any next generation firewall, they will be able to look inside the payload of the packet. So Azure firewall will only look into the header of the packet. But these mature firewalls will look into the payload of the packet if there is any kind of malicious activity is, is going on or not. So there is no comparison between Azure policies, Azure firewall and these firewalls. Uh, if you try to remember uh, back in old days, we used to configure simple access control policies on the routers. It's exactly the same thing with the Azure network security group. They do, they do not have IPS, IDS. They do not have inspection engine. So that's all.
All right, so our uh, webinar is coming to an end. Maybe the last one minute. If any queries are there, please feel yes. free to stop or type in. Yes, uh, post the webinar, I will send across a feedback form. Really appreciate your feedback on that form uh, so that we can continue to keep doing this activity in future. And also, if you have any more topics to be covered, any other new insights, uh, please feel right. free to also write in the feedback. We will cover more such webinar series for the benefit of our customer fraternity with support from our partners like Barracuda. We will also share our IMS and automation led uh, insights which will help your organization to create a future proof ecosystem which will be good for your business. Thank you. All right then, so Najbul, we can formally conclude the session. Uh, we yes. For our timeline, so thank you once again. And we totally appreciate your active participation. Thank you to all the participants. And thank you, because and thanks, Najbul. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ajit. Thank you, Ajit. Thank, thank you, Vikas. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.